One, two, three, four. I declare a thumb war. Oh, man, again. One, two, three, four. I declare a thumb war. Oh. Ooh, gotcha. Son of a bitch. Oh, man. Ah, that's not... Ah. Ah. Oh. Done. Get out! <laughs> Let's talk about failure. So there's this huge stigma attached to failure. Um, a lot of people don't like to talk about it, but the reality is that you really can't have success without failure. They go hand in hand. From the perspective of you know hindsight's 2020, talk to us and maybe share some of your experiences with some of the people that might be watching that might want to know what have you had to go through to get to where you are now? Because I, I'm sure people watching, um, especially people who may be starting over or starting for the first time, they're struggling, you know, they're constant rejection or what they're doing is not working or, you know, they're, they're just not making it happen. Mm -hmm. um, share some of, some of that if you've had any. What's, what are some of your failures or some of the do-overs you, you wish you had? I haven't had any. Thanks so much. So long. <laughs> My road has been littered with failures uh, all all along. I you know I got out of acting school, and um, I couldn't get an agent. And my first job uh, as an actor was touring for a year and a half on a bus and truck Shakespeare uh, show, playing the nurse's assistant in Romeo and Juliet. Um, so. And I had no agent, and you know, I started at the very, very, very bottom. I believed in myself, and I knew that I needed to act, and I knew that I was good. I knew that I needed to get better, and I always kept my goal as to to just become a better and better actor. My goal was never to become famous. My goal was to become a working actor, so I didn't have to wait tables uh, and do catering and drive a moving van. Mm -hmm. And so I knew that to do that, I needed to be better and better. So I was always taking workshops, doing readings, uh, getting groups of friends together and putting on plays and um, shooting short films and just honing my, my skills as I kept auditioning. And I just started at the very, very bottom and then got some little jobs in town and got a little bit better agent and then a, you know, a little bit better jobs and then my first like TV gig and then another little bit better agent and just I started it my wife calls it like the Amway pyramid like I started at the very bottom <laughs> yeah. like climbing my way up uh, my way up to the top but I've had some um, extraordinary uh, failures I had a huge break this director I'd worked with several times cast me as a lead in a Broadway play and it was a uh, restoration comedy it was a period comedy from just after Shakespeare and um I was so certain this was going to be my break. I was going to be front page in the New York Times. I was going to get great reviews. This was going to be awesome. I was going to be discovered. I was going to get a great agent. Everything was going to happen for me because of this. Yeah. And I was so nervous that I sucked. I mean, I really <laughs> was bad in this play. It's called London Assurance. You can look it up. Look for the online reviews. They were pretty terrible. And um, I was really, really bad. And I really bombed. And um, how'd you deal with it? Uh, I I cried a lot. I I was devastated. It was it was tor every time I did the show, it was torture. I I, I felt like I wasn't in my body. I, I, it was the weirdest thing. Like yeah. everything I had been so good as an actor before, but um, and it's because you felt everything was riding on that. Yeah, that was just so much pressure. Which yeah. as an actor, you need to feel zero pressure. You need to just be your character and be in the moment and be listening and breathing and, and reacting and. And I couldn't do any of that stuff. And uh, I almost had a nervous breakdown. I mean, it was crazy. And, and from that, my agents at the time didn't come see the show. So I fired them and I got these terrible reviews. And then I, I left town. I went to this cabin in Oregon with my wife and just holed up for a while. And, and, um, and then I just kind of like, I, I kind of, it kind of broke through a bunch of stuff for me. And I saw the world a lot more clearly. And I was kind of like, fuck it, I have to be me, this is who I am. I'm not gonna try and be something else and go for these reviews and agents and this kind of path. Like I have to be myself and I'm gonna follow my own path. And then not long after that, I, you know, I did 
started getting into film and TV and came out to LA and things just started opening up for me. So what, what was the worst experience of my life ended up being the most transformative, mm -hmm. best experience of my life. Did you ever have those feelings of resentment? You know, some people might feel, you know, the people who are not with me through my struggles are not going to be with me through my successes. Do you, you ever have to deal with any of that? Oh, sure. Yeah, resentment's a big one. That um, You hold a grudge? Um, I absolutely do. And then it's my obligation to really let that go. Yeah. Because someone said, um, I think it was um, uh, Carrie Fisher, but I, she might have been quoting it from someone else. Resentment is the poison that you drink waiting for someone else to die. So you're drinking this just vile poison and yeah. going like, oh, that guy, uh, and you're like, oh. It eats away at you, yeah. and it holds you back. You it know? does. Um, I have a lot of resentment at like New York Theater where I spent 10 years working, and no one really believed in me there, and casting agents, and they never get a shot. I never got to audition for you know, Lincoln Center or Manhattan Theater Club or all these theaters that I really wanted to work at and that was my whole reason of coming out to LA is like oh you're giving all the lead parts to the TV actors I'm gonna go get on a sitcom and then I can go back to LA to New York and I can have any part I want but you know everyone's just being human and making their best decisions that they can make in the moment and yeah. you know we have to we have to just have an open forgiving heart to to everyone on our journey well success is the best revenge too if you have a vengeful heart you know and you have to be careful with that because that is a different kind of poison that you can drink, and that's the poison of narcissism of like, ha see, I've made gotcha. it, and I got you, and I'm going to get back at you because I'm... So it's still, it's a one-up or one-down position. It's yeah. like you're still putting yourself above other people, like, oh, I'm successful, and ha-ha-ha, look at me now. Yeah. And that's a very dangerous thing because then you've got to try and maintain that, and then you go down and you feel terrible about yourself, and everyone else looks good, and then you try and puff yourself back up. It's a very false sense of yourself. Yeah.